Fox Smithsonian Institute has got a brand new project that you would love to hear about. It is a project called Homespun, a project to establish a permanent Indian American presence at the Smithsonian Institution. And in our studio, we have the two people. One who is actually directing the effort. Her name is Francie Youngberg. She's with the Smithsonian Institution, and welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And I want to welcome uh, Gautam Chandra, folks. He's the vice president of Washington Gas, but he himself is the founding sponsor of this particular project, and I welcome you, sir. Thank you, Ramesh. It's, it's a great pleasure to be here. Tell me a little bit about this project. Well, this is a great project, as you said. A lot of people out there do not know m much about the Indian Americans who came here to the United States. They came as early as the 18th century, and now there's 2.7 million in the United States. Uh -huh. So this is a great opportunity for the community to show what their roles were in American history, their contributions, their struggles. Our Smithsonian Asian American program wants to have an exhibit, a curriculum guide for young people, mm -hmm. middle school, and also public programs around the country. So that's what we're offering. Gautam, you are an Indian American, and this particular project you're so passionate about. You tell <laughs> folks why should they participate in it. There's more than 2.7 million Indian Americans now in the U.S., and it's one of the fastest growing, one of the most successful mm -hmm. immigrant communities in the U.S. But if you think about our presence in mainstream media, yeah. or our presence in American history curriculums for yeah. children and social sciences, uh -huh. it's not there. And so for me, uh, being a first generation Indian American, I feel that this history needs to be written, it needs to be woven into, we're woven into the fabric of American life. So we need to capture this moment so that our descendants, you know, few generations down the road when they've lost their direct touch with India, they'll have a way to look back and they'll know where they came from. Now have you, done this before for some other community? Do you have a road map exactly how you're going to put it all together? Well, the Smithsonian, as you know, is uh, partly a government institution, but uh -huh. Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Program, we raise most of our funds, so we were fortunate enough to do several projects of this nature with other groups, the Koreans, the Vietnamese, the Filipinos, and so uh -huh. now it's the Indian Americans, and we are really excited because I think this is going to be the biggest effort that we've established so far. And we just need the help of all the people in the community to be able to make this happen. And that's what, you know, we're grateful that we're here today to be able to let the community know what this is all about. Tell me exactly what is it going to consist of? What are you looking for? With every group, it's different. We try to listen to the members of that particular community of mm -hmm. what makes sense for them. For Indian Americans, what we're hoping to do is be able to have an exhibit that spans not only the great contributions, but some of the struggles so that we know that there's a range of Indian Americans. There are the very successful entrepreneurs, we have cab drivers, we have people who are also struggling in the community. So we want to paint a complete picture of the community. That's very important. And we want to reach the young generation, so we are going to have the curriculum guide that's aimed at middle school students. And the public programs really could be anything. It could be about literature, it could be theater, like we have been sponsoring along with uh, NETSAP, the South Asian Literary and Theater Arts Festival every year. Yes. It, it's been in its fifth year at the Smithsonian. So that's very important to us, but we want to collect also. We are hoping that there are a lot of people out there who have wonderful treasures in their yes. attic, in their basement, they don't even know about. <laughs> and so, you know, we were hoping to collect from Mr. Bose, for example, who, uh -huh. you know, with Bose um, sound systems. Yes. We were hoping to be able to collect the first Pentium chip. We're, we, we to hear from people what is it that they have in you know in their possession because they're the the first people who came here from their family I'm sure brought something that's something that we would be interested in it won't necessarily be in the exhibit but at least it will be preserved for the future and that is really what the Smithsonian is it's the nation's attic that's where you know if you contribute 
you are going, it's going to be safe and it's going to be there forever. What we need now is really the support of the community in fundraising and being able to raise the funds that we need in order to hire a scholar. So right now we're looking to raising about $200,000 in order for us to hire a scholar on Indian American studies and be able to start designing what the exhibit might look like, what the public programs are going to be. And we also need to reach out to the whole country. We need to go to you know, key cities with large Indian populations uh -huh. and be able to talk to the key people there and uh -huh. get them on board. Now you said you're looking for money from the folks mm -hmm. to contribute to this cause. Now they already pay taxes. <laughs> Smithsonian <laughs> gets a slice of those taxes. So why are you asking them for money? You should be getting a uh, cut from the Smithsonian budget. Uh, it's, that's true, and it's interesting because the Smithsonian, two-thirds of its funding c does come from Congress. Uh -huh. But what, as you very well know, the Smithsonian is really behind in terms of the amount of money it needs to have in order to even fix the existing buildings that they uh -huh. have. And so for the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American program, we get very modest funding from the Smithsonian. So all the projects I talked to you about, the Vietnamese, the Korean, the Filipinos, were raised by the community themselves uh -huh. because that's what we need to do. And it's a way to show them that there is support for this in the community because the Smithsonian does not have the funding to do this. And, you know, someday maybe we'll have our own Asian American Museum. But until then, you know, our community has really has to step up and do this. So what you are really saying is that our ambition is bigger than our pocketbook. <laughs> and we don't want to wait till 20 years from now when Congress gives some money for the Asian Pacific. Yeah. We want to raise our own and do it on our own. Is that what you're saying? And as a community, I don't think we want to wait for that to happen, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we will lose a lot of precious time. And as we mentioned, some of the early generations that uh, came here, if we wait too long, we mm -hmm. may lose them. So we want to make sure that we capture that experience. Are you going to tell the stories of the inventors, the rich people, or are you also <laughs> going to get the ordinary folk stories, just like Dersh and television? We are very ordinary, you know. <laughs> Started back in 87. <laughs> I understand that you were the first television uh, Indian television here in the uh, Washington D.C. area. So very true. That's that's a piece of history right there. In the right United there. States of America, <laughs> first time, but here in D.C. So now you have started on the project. So how does it move, Gautam? What is the first phase? Phase two timeline. The first phase is really to get to a point where we can hire a professional curator okay. to actually develop the exhibit, the design of it, start to collect. And to get to that, mm -hmm. we need to raise about $200,000. And that's okay. really the first phase. Okay. Once we get to that point, uh -huh. then we get to the second phase, which is a $2 million goal, uh -huh. which helps us complete the exhibit okay. and then make it a traveling exhibit. So it's going to play here in DC for uh -huh. a year. And after that, travel to all the major US metropolitan mm -hmm. centers where there are, there's large Indian communities. So that's, that'll be the second phase. And then my ambitious third phase is to get the 20 million mark, which uh, will help somebody in the community name a wing uh -huh. in the Smithsonian <laughs> where this can be housed permanently. So that's, that's the, the ambitious goal. There are a lot of people who made a lot of money <laughs> in this town and across the United States of America. I know people have foundations. And folks, those of you who have foundations, you know you have to spend 5% of it for a cause that is American, and also understand that you have to give it to the nonprofit companies here in the United States. You will never find another uh, project that will be this good. And also remember, if you're a centimillion, uh, you certainly <laughs> must have a great story to tell. You, and your story could become, could become a page in the history and stay in the attic of the Smithsonian. I think you said it best. It, you know, this is America's institution. It's the largest museum complex in the world. Why wouldn't Indian Americans want to be represented? Gautam, you're one of the founding donors. So tell me, how do you see your role? And how would the role be of the people who actually uh, donate money? Well, uh, first of all, I was very excited about being a part of this because I have three young children. Uh -huh. And I, I look to their future, and I think they would get a lot of benefit out of this program as they mm -hmm. grow uh, in this country. Uh, in terms of my role, I kind of 
uh, I view myself as a facilitator. So uh -huh. I was approached by the Smithsonian, and I'm trying to do whatever I can, including donating myself, but also uh -huh. introducing this program to all my contacts, my acquaintances, showing them how exciting this program is, and hopefully get, getting them to participate. Now, participation hopefully means people write checks. But uh -huh. not only that, they also donate their energy uh -huh. and perhaps introduce this to others because ultimately it's a community-based program. That means it has to grow virally within the community. Mm -hmm. We all have a certain set of contacts. If we reach out to them, ask them to reach out to their contacts, hopefully we can reach a big, big portion of the community and get them yeah. involved. You know, we want funding, but we also want them to think about, you know, the, the different objects that they have in their home that you know, could tell the story. We want them to talk to their elders and find out how they came to the United States. So we are creating the Homespun website, which is going to contain the 2.0 tools. Okay. So we're going to have, you know, Facebook with Flickr and Twitter and all of the different things so that even young people can participate. And that, you know, this is going to be a living and breathing type of exhibit so that even after the exhibit is created and it's shown at the Smithsonian and it travels the country for three years, to, you know, about 12 to 15 venues, we're able to update it by having people submit more information which we can put on the website. A lot of times people view these programs as these are for the, the people who can write the big checks. And really what we want to reach out to is the entire community. Everybody can participate. You donate a good Indian American story. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. everybody can be involved in it, and that's really what we need. Our goal, depending on how fast we can uh, raise the funds, is to have the exhibit ready by 2011 or 2012. One thing I want to, want to say is this initiative is with the Smithsonian Institution. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, causes out there, a lot of causes that people are wary of because they don't know if they're here today, gone tomorrow. But this is the institution within the United States that chronicles and is a keeper of history. So there's no better brand to be associated with. And I think people need to see that and be part of it because we're not going to get a better opportunity than this one to tell our story. But you tell me one thing. The Chinese, which is the largest immigration community, they did it. Mm -hmm. We're the second largest. Why are we waited till the Filipinos <laughs> done it, Koreans done it, Vietnamese done it? Why did we come in, come up so late on the horizon? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting, too, that the whole Asian American community is really the last food group, in a sense, that came to the Smithsonian period. Uh -huh. We weren't created until 1997. So we've been here a mere 11 years. Uh -huh. And out of that time, it really didn't, you know, we weren't able to start the fundraising for the Chinese community had come. They, they do not have a sustained effort like what we're launching with the Indian Americans. The reason we did it with the Filipinos was because it was their centennial in 2006. Uh -huh. For the Koreans, it was their centennial in 2003. Uh -huh. For the Vietnamese, it was their 30th anniversary in 2005. So with the Indian Americans, there hasn't been a historical milestone, but we moved up the cycle anyway because we really feel that you know, they can't continue to be missing in history. And there's literally only two paid staff in our unit. And the rest of it, we raise funds in order to bring in more consultants and more people to work on this. So, you know, we're working very hard to cover all of the major Asian American groups. And we will continue to do so. We're particularly excited about the Indian Americans because, as you said, it's, it's a long time coming. It is now time to do this. And just because we're late doesn't mean that we can't make the best one. <laughs> and I want to thank you very, very much. Thank I appreciate you. you coming into the studio and launching this. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.